Hi, I'm Jeff Solferelli, and I'm a member of the San Leandro Historical Railway Society. I want to invite you to our location here in San Leandro at Orchard and Davis Street in Thrasher Park. Our design and our purpose for the San Leandro Historical Railway Society is preservation of this SP Depot, which is over 100 years old, for training and teaching of railway safety through Operation Lifesaver and running three model railroad layouts. We began uh, in 1973 uh, as a model railroad club uh, right here in San Leandro uh, in a hobby shop on Bancroft Avenue. About 1983, uh, the hobby shop closed and so the club had to find a new home. Uh, we were fortunate enough to find another hobby shop on uh, Park Street in Alameda and we built a second HO display in Alameda. That lasted about four years, and then in 1987, that hobby shop closed, and we again were looking for a new home. Here in San Leandro, the city was renovating Thrasher Park, where we are located today. And uh, also at that time, Southern Pacific Railroad was going to dispose of the San Leandro Depot, uh, which is very close to the park here on the other side of the tracks. So all these things came together and we were able to procure the depot from Southern Pacific and at the same time the city of San Leandro gave us some property here in Thrasher Park uh, where we could relocate the depot. So we had the depot relocated and for the next three years we restored uh, the depot itself and started working on the HO display. The railroads of the early 20th century competed with each other and they all had their own china custom made for them. Uh, and we have several examples in here of uh, Western Pacific and Southern Pacific China. Even though we are a Southern Pacific Depot, we have a little bit of historical information here about the key system. We also have uh, a display case on the other side of the depot here that has some lamps and lights uh, and those kinds of artifacts. We have an old phone typewriter. Uh, this was the communications phone uh, that the uh, station master and ticket master uh, would use to communicate uh, to the other stations. There was of course the telegrapher. We all know that in those days this is how the station masters and ticket masters would communicate with each other. And of course, here were the controls uh, for what is commonly called uh, the semaphore that would notify the engineers of whether they had to stop at the station or not. We have spoken to over 22,000 students here uh, in San Leandro in the years that we have been doing uh, this outreach program. And uh, although we cannot absolutely definitively know what kind of impact it has, our view is if we have somehow prevented one fatality, um, the whole effort is worth it. Uh, if you're interested in Operation Lifesaver or like a little more information, uh, go to oli.org and there's a lot of information about the organization. In addition to the HO display that we have inside uh, of the depot, uh, we also have a G scale and O scale a display in the backyard that we began building in 2008 and that has been a very successful draw especially to the children and the parents uh, of San Leandro and again the, the surrounding communities. I am Joe Barker, the superintendent of the G&O Garden Railroad. The G&O Garden Railroad is being built by the San Leandro Historical Railroad Society and is the only public garden railroad in Northern uh, California. It has both G gauge and O gauge three rail layouts, hence the name GNO. The construction of the GNO started in 2008 and will never be finished. It was designed by Nancy Norris and has several 
interesting features, including our beautiful water feature here at the entrance of the display. The G-gauge lines consist of approximately 400 feet of track in two loops. The O-gauge line, which is also three rail, has approximately 500 feet of track. We also have a children's display where we welcome children down to run trains and to enjoy the model railroading hobby. We hope that you enjoy your tour of the G&O Garden Railroad. The Garden Railroad is built in a raised cinder block display that is filled with uh, soil. The cinder blocks are eventually going to be covered with a rock fascia. We are also going to have pavers installed around the complete display. There are 15 bridges throughout the display. The bridges that you're seeing now were built by uh, John Bowie and the Central Canyon is named after him. It's called Bowie Canyon. We have a model in the far back of the Golden Gate Bridge, which is still under construction. And the next bridge, the White Bridge, is a model of the Bixby Bridge, which is south of the Monterey on US-1. And then we have two bridges that are on the Colorado Narrow Gauge Railroads, the Durango and Silverton. One of the unique features of the g Garden Railroad is our firefighting feature, which has a burning house and a helicopter dumping a water and the firefighters responding to the fire in a typical California forest. We have a small layout that children can run. The transformers are set at a height which the children can easily access. The layout actually consists of three loops. There's two upper O-gauge loops. We can also have a monorail installed. On the lower loops, we have two G-gauge loops. One is a back and forth loop, which is running a San Francisco cable car now, and a Disney train. The upper loop is running a mine train and a Hogwarts train. For this filming, we have a circus theme and a Disneyland theme. Next to the depot, the GNO has a staging yard for the O-gauge and for the G-gauge. We have um, two people who are preparing to run live steam engines, Nancy Norris in the foreground and Jeff Solferelli in the background. And we also operate battery powered trains and track powered trains. This diesel train is battery powered that is now coming through the G-Gage staging yard. I'm Nancy Lagomarsino and I work with the plants here on the G&O Railroad. And I'll tell you a little bit about them. The display has four distinct planting areas. The east end has a California mountain theme surrounding Norris Falls, which includes dwarf Alberta spruce and a group of dwarf bald cypress. This transitions to a desert theme featuring cacti and succulents. The display is divided in the center by Bowie Canyon. Immediately to the west of the canyon is another California mountain theme. This is followed by the children's display with dwarf Hinoki cypress, seiju Chinese elms, and miniature pomegranate. The display contains over 50 trees. When I first came on board to help design the G&O, I wanted to have something when people first came up to the Garden Railway to have something that kind of grabbed them something because of the park, something that told them there was something different going on here, and something exciting and beautiful. We wanted something dramatic, so we had to have height. And this water feature has kind of an S shape to it, which gives you more run for the water, more areas where the water is sparkling, and goes down into, uh, right at my feet here, goes down into a pondless waterfall reservoir so people can walk over that. You don't have to clean the water so frequently. And uh, it works for a club to not have to do maintenance so much. So that's another thing that this railway was designed for. Really critical to a well-running garden railway is to have a staging area or a yard in which all the various members can get their trains started on the track and then you can see all of the boxes and suitcase-like things stacked up there. And one of the reasons that it was designed this way is to have the minimum amount of walk space here. And then on the other side, by law, we had to have four-foot walkways on the other side. And so we had to use under the railroad to store stuff. Okay, some indoor railways have the uh, people who are staging and working on the railway they don't see anything from their vantage, but I wanted to be able to see the garden 
from the staging area. So we've used these vertical rocks to very quickly get elevation and then have our soil and plants on the other side of that. That way we feel like we're in the garden as well. When we first had the idea to build this railway out here, we had to show the members what it might look like. And the plan was one thing. We did have a two-dimensional plan, but having, seeing it in three dimension really helped. So it got to show that the members of the club would be standing up with the trains about waist high, uh, so there was less bending over. Uh, it was easier to maintain. So I made up this plan out of foam. It's very rudimentary, but it does show the basics of it. There were some things that uh, we ended up doing that were on the plan and some things that we ended up changing when we actually got the uh, concrete block walls in place. We did end up having the water feature and trestle at this end and a water feature at this end, but this water feature turned out to be the fire scene instead of the, um, the little mountain water feature. We also started out with a tunnel over here and ended up with a gorge instead, made it easier to get uh, stuck trains out of there. And we had a major gorge in here because it's always fun to have a lot of bridges. So with this major gorge through here, uh, we had members building the bridges, some of them for the very first time. And uh, so it, now they have the G-scale bridges and the O-scale bridges and uh, abutments that are to scale for the O and abutments that are to scale for the G. And it all works out because of the perspective. And I was really adamant about getting a children's layout in here. So we made a separate layout for them and a larger area than we originally planned. Part of that goes underneath in this tunnel over here comes out a snow shed over here. So we're making the most out of the small area that we have. This area, the area on the edge here, right about kid height, is for seasonal displays. Right now it's sort of the Disney Circus display. For most of the summer it will be set up with the 4th of July patriotic scenes. We have always have a Halloween open house where there's lots of orange and black stuff, witches and pumpkins. And then Christmas, uh, of course, we have snow. We have fake snow on the little trees up here. And so that's why this is not landscaped. It's so that we can easily change it out according to the season. So one of the nice things about being in a club is that one person gets one idea and another person gets another idea. They get together and create something that neither of them would have created by themselves. So things are constantly changing. But uh, what doesn't change is that we have trains running, a lot of trains running in the children's area, and uh, it can't be too busy for the kids.
I want to thank you for joining us for this tour of the San Leandro Historical Railway Society. If you have a passion for model railroads, be they O scale, G scale, or HO scale, come on down. We're always looking for new members to join our club. And by the way, you'll find us here in Thrasher Park at the Old Depot, corner of Orchard and Davis Street. You'll also be able to follow us on our website here listed on the screen. And so as we like to say, till then, all aboard and green signals ahead. <laughs>